Let's talk imposter syndrome for artists. I'm gonna give you four tips on how to overcome this and tell you how I have overcome this again and again. Welcome to Celebration State, where we help Christian creatives to grow in their creativity and in their love for God as well. Imposter syndrome is all over the internet and it is defined on Wikipedia as a psychological pattern in which an individual doubts their skills, talents, or accomplishments and has an internalized fear of being exposed as a fraud. Let me know down in the comments, have you ever struggled with this? This feeling of not measuring up, this feeling of not wanting to be discovered for who you really are because then people would know that you're a fake and you don't belong and you're not good enough. I think the reason why this is so popular right now is because so many people do identify with it. And I think that Christian creatives struggle with this a lot when it comes to whether they should put themselves out there in their creative callings, either before, during, or after the whole process. There's always this fear or self-doubt that seems to creep up in the minds of believers. So let me tell you my story and show you how this is nothing new for me. When I was a child, I was an artist. I would draw everywhere. I would take my drawing book with me. And when I made it into high school, I started to encounter some self-doubt, a little bit of imposter syndrome. I made it into this advanced art class and I noticed not only was it a little more challenging than what I was used to, but also the people that were in the class were predominantly men, which they were all nice guys. I don't think any of them had a bad thought towards me, but something just made me feel like I don't belong. And that was a bad feeling. And to top it all off, in high school, I decided to turn to atheism, which created such a bitterness in me and such a darkness. And that affected my personal relationships on every level. And after a while, I was not able to create any art at all. I couldn't figure out the paints. I couldn't figure out projects that I was trying to do. I would maybe join an art class just to drop out because I couldn't handle it. It was so hard for me and it ended up being this thing that I thought was gonna be me for the rest of my life. My profession, my calling was something that I totally walked away from. Put my paints away, was not considering doing art anymore. And then, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He's so amazing, he's awesome, you guys. He's so good. He saved me when I was in college and he began to just deposit such life in me and such joy and the bitterness was all gone and washed away. Still, I had art in this sort of closet in the back of my mind. Close the door, we're never gonna open that again, that's done. And it was only through the work that God did in me during that time that that began to awaken. There was a woman who was praying for me and she prophesied over me that God wanted to use my art. Now that might sound just kind of normal and something that someone would encourage you with if they knew you were an artist and just something nice to say, but this woman didn't know that I was an artist or had ever been an artist. And so when I got that word, I was actually upset about it. I didn't want that. It was something of, that was surrounded by pain for me. And so I kind of brushed it off until someone told me the same thing again. And I was so frustrated, but they told me, don't worry, if God really has this for you, then he will create this desire in your heart for it. So I sat down with some worship music on and I prayed like crazy and I got my acrylic paints and an old painting that I had never been able to figure out. And I invited him into that process and wouldn't you know it, I was able to finish that painting and solve the hard parts of that painting so fast and I was just blown away. So God began to create in me this desire to make art again. I started making it more and more. I began to make art for my church from the encouragement of my pastors. And then I also, at the end of it all, decided that I wanted to pursue art professionally, which was a big deal. But that's not the end of the story. And the truth is, is that even when you put yourself out there in a professional field, is that the enemy is gonna continue to attack you the higher that you go. He's gonna keep on trying to knock you down. So I have had failures and I've had successes. And every point along the way, the enemy has said, you can't handle it, you should give up, your art is nothing, um, you should quit, people don't like you, people don't like your art. And that's been hard. But the truth is, is that I have this foundation inside of me that makes me so strong with God 
that I don't get knocked off course. And so I wanted to share that with you. If this video is blessing you so far, please hit that like button. It really helps to support our channel. So let me get into the tips that I've learned for you guys. Number one, you need to know who you are. And the only way that you're going to do this is through relationship with Jesus, through being alone with him, through studying his word, through understanding who he's created you to be. Nobody can give you that knowledge except for God. Someone can tell you and someone can speak words over you and that's amazing. But unless Holy Spirit is doing that work in your heart too, those words aren't gonna mean anything. So you have to pursue relationship with God and he's gonna tell you about who you are in that place. Number two, you need to know whose you are. If you are a Christian, you belong to the God of the universe and he not only has created you, but he's also called you friend. He's also called you a child of God. This is of the utmost value because you are connected to him. He's adopted you. It means that you are not worthless, that you never can be worthless that you are built with this innate value because you are made in the image of your father. So know whose you are because that means that you're valuable. Number three, know your calling. Only through that connection, that relationship with God, are you going to actually know and understand, okay, this passion that I have, you gave this to me. I didn't have this before. And the more time I spend with you, God, the more that I wanna do this thing, I think this is from you, I'm going to pursue it. And we're pursuing it out of honor for him. It says, whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord, not for men. So if you believe that this cause is not yours, it's God's cause, then no matter what, you haven't failed. Even if the world doesn't accept this thing that you're pursuing, he accepts your obedience and that is the only thing that actually matters. So if you know that this is your calling, whether you're supposed to do it professionally or whether you're just supposed to pursue it as something that he's asked you to do, you can never really fail if it's something that he's calling you to and you're being obedient to do. The last tip is know your enemy. Now this might seem a little bit weird, but we need to know what the voice of the enemy sounds like so that we can identify whose voice it is and what our actions should be when we receive one of those whispers. Because the truth is, is that imposter syndrome has been around from the beginning. The world might call it self-doubt or insecurity, but it's this questioning voice that gets us to doubt who God has made us to be. And for artists and creatives, it might sound different. It might sound something like, oh, look at that author. They're so successful. They've made this amazing book. You could never make a book as amazing as that. Or look at this music video that you put out. You got almost no views on this thing. You better just quit now while you can. Those thoughts are not from God. And I don't believe that they're from you either. It's that same old serpent whispering in our ear telling us things to derail the purposes of God. In Ephesians 6, 12, it says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And then in 2 Corinthians 10, verse five, it says, we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. So we can recognize that these thoughts, these condemning, doubtful thoughts are thoughts that are coming from the enemy and we can actually attack them. We can say no, we can reject them in Jesus name and then we can replace them with the truth from scripture. No, I'm not a failure, I'm the head and not the tail. No, I won't be afraid of this because God has not given me a spirit of fear. So God is amazing. He has amazing purposes for the way that he has uniquely created you. You guys can do this. Some of you may have already done this yourselves. Let me know down in the comments. Is there a way that you have overcome imposter syndrome and tell me how you've done it? I would love to hear about that. It's so encouraging to hear other people's growth. I wanna see you walking your identity. I wanna see you walking in the knowledge of God. I wanna see you ready to fight the enemy, ready to kick fear in the face. We can do this, you guys. If you wanna be a part of our future creative journeys, please hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. Be so blessed.